Hi, uh, this video tutorial is an overview tutorial for Video Surgeon. So by definition, we're going to go through a lot of things relatively quickly, and I'm not going to be giving you a lot of detail about any one particular function. So other than giving you the lay of the land here, you're going to need to watch the other video tutorials uh, that will go into more detail about each of the different specific functions found on Video Surgeon. So again, uh, you, you know, if you watch this and you say, gee, I wish you would have explained that more, there's probably another video on this page that does explain it more. And that's not the purpose for this particular video. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, Firstly, what we have here is the main video surgeon interface and up at the top, the first button here, which my mouse is over top, is an open button. So if you click it, it works like most other open buttons or file open buttons on, on programs. It will open a Windows dialog box and it will allow you to browse and find a, a video to open. This is a save as button. so like most other save as buttons on programs if you have a file loaded like this one and you want to save it um, uh, with a different name because you've made changes or modifications this button allows you to do that this button is a rip or ripping DVD button so if you have a DVD that you'd like to uh, uh, use the videos from you do not use the open button to open the DVD you use this button which is the rip button because you first have to rip those DVDs from the DVD um, I should say you have to rip those video files from the DVD and place them on your computer this next button uh, with the little music tabs on it is a button that will extract the audio from a video uh, you might find this particularly useful um, in some situations where there may be a song for instance on YouTube that you can't find anywhere else and you'd like to have it to practice to you'd like to have it to put on your iPod or your mp3 player this is a way in which you can actually load a video up and then just extract only the audio from it and save that to your computer next what we have here is a question mark or a help button and what you will find in here is essentially the same type of information that I'm doing for you right now in this video. It's a quick start guide which goes through each of the different bunk, uh, excuse me, each of the different buttons and each of the different functionalities found on Video Surgeon in a written format. So it's something that you probably should um, open and print and have it by your desk as a uh, helpful guide, especially as you learn Video Surgeon. Uh, it won't take you that long to become thoroughly familiar with it because it's not a very complex program and at that point I'm sure you'll want it or you'll be able to discard that but as you get started the quick start guide is just that it's a good way to help you get started real quickly so you can begin using this within a couple of minutes the next button is an ab about button um, there are a couple of things in there that are of interest one is that this button will tell you what your current version of Video Surgeon is also this button um, has a uh, selection in here to set the default file locations for um, videos and Video Surgeon project files so when you install Video Surgeon on your computer it sets the default locations but if you'd like to override those and change them for your computer because you have you know a series of videos already stored in some directory and that's the one you'd like to set as your default um, that will allow you to do it and again there is another video on this site that shows you exactly how to do that this little area here is an address bar just like you have an address bar on your browser you can copy and paste into here you can type into here but normally you're going to be copying and pasting URLs from sources like video or excuse me from sources like YouTube or other video sharing sites you might also choose to copy a file location from your computer and that's what this is and copy and paste it into here and then once you've done that you click this go button and that will load the file for you this screen here is the main video screen obviously uh, the main video screen on video surgeon in which when you open a file it will play um, what we have below that then is a timeline and it shows you the length of the video in this case we have a 50.1 second video 
the little uh, progress indicator here shows you that we're at 0.8 seconds. Um, below that, we have a combo button that plays, pauses, and stops. Very similar to many other combo buttons that I'm sure you've used before. Then what we have next are a series of buttons, and these buttons are used to set loop points. So we have one that sets the beginning loop point, one that sets the ending loop point, which is the next one, one that wherever, regardless of where the cursor is, this will reset it to the beginning of the loop points, meaning to the green, and this erases the loop points and allows you to start over. Next, then, let's move over here to this blue area uh, on the right-hand side. And what we have are three sliders. This first one changes the pitch of the audio that you hear in the video. And it changes the pitch by a half step. Um, so when you click it and it moves it by one, on the plus side, you've changed it by a half a step or a semitone. Similarly, if you click the minus side, you change it by one. And again, you've changed it by a half step. Um, if you click on the text, it will reset it. So in other words, if we go down here to tempo and set this all the way to 400, which is the maximum um, in terms of an increase in tempo. And if you click tempo text, it resets it to 100, which is the default setting because that's the normal uh, speed at which you play a video. It is the speed that the video normally is, is played at. It is the speed that when you first load it, that all videos will be played at. If you want to speed those videos up, you simply can grab a hold of this and slide it. If you want to slow them down, you can lower it below 100. And you can click the pluses and minus buttons, and it'll either lower it or it'll, excuse me, it will either increase it or it will decrease it, depending on which of those two buttons you click. Um, a volume slider, which is self-explanatory, in addition to this volume, if you have it up to 100% and it's still not loud enough, uh, you obviously have your internal computer audio controls in which you can increase the volume even more, and you may indeed need to do that depending upon the video. And then we move down here to these four buttons that are different in terms of their coloration and shape than the buttons at the top, and that is because they are they have different functions, obviously, and these are what we would call project buttons, whereas if you set a loop point, um, which we started to do here, just for example. If you set loop points, if you change the tempo, if you zoom in, and then you want to save those changes so that the next time you load um, this particular project, all those uh, settings are preset or pre-selected for you, then that's what you would use these buttons for down here. So this first is a project open button. It's telling me that I haven't saved the current project, and that's correct. Uh, do you want to save it first? No. So it will then open um, a Windows dialog box and allow me to say or allow me to select a VSP file, which is the Video Surgeon Project file. So this is an open. This is a save. This is a project save as. So the difference between these two is if you just want to save the existing file, you click this. If you want to save it save as in a way that you're going to um, give it a, a different name. And the reason you do that, of course, is because you've changed some of the settings and you want to save that. Then that's what you would use. This is a project notes button. If you click it, it allows you to type in notes. Once you've typed in your notes, you close it. And the next time you open it, those same notes will appear. And again, if you've saved the project file, you can open it a day or a year later, and those notes will still be in that file as well. Um, we also need to just briefly talk about how we zoom. And when you have a video that's open on the screen, regardless of whether it's playing or whether it's paused, you simply left click. And every time you left click, you zoom in by a factor of two. So I've clicked twice. It gives me a fourfold. There's an eightfold zoom. There's a 16-fold zoom. There's a 32-fold 30 fold zoom. So you're going to see as you zoom in, um, you may reach the point of diminishing returns. And this is where the quality of the video is important because the 
more you zoom in, the more granulated or pixelated these pictures will become. So if you start with a good quality video, you'll be able to zoom a lot further and still be able to have sufficient resolution to actually see the neck and to see the strings and to see the fingering. Um, you zoom out by simply clicking the um, right mouse button. And again, every time you click out or every time you click, you zoom out one step. Um, to center it, you click in the area that you want to see. In other words, if I click over here, um, you're going to see that it pushes this guitar player right off the screen. However, if I click here by his fingers, it keeps it centered roughly where we want it. And that way you can focus in on the particular area of the video that you'd like to see. The last thing then, and then we'll conclude this video, is to talk briefly about this toggle to original size. It is a toggle button, so if you click on it, you'll see it opens uh, a second screen. If you click it again, it closes that screen. And once you've opened this second screen, to get the video to play in here, you have to click the play button um, on the video surgeon interface. And I've done that, and as, as you can see, it then indeed opens this video. Um, I guess what you also need to understand with regard to this video is that um, a lot of people click this original size and they think it's going to be bigger. And in this case, the video is bigger. But depending upon the video itself, and this would be especially true with most of the videos that you download from sites like YouTube, that you're going to click the toggle to the original size and you're going to find that the video is actually smaller. And that is because Video Surgeon will actually stretch or it will shrink the videos that uh, it opens so they fit within this standard screen on Video Surgeon. Uh, but most of those videos that are uploaded to YouTube are going to actually be smaller videos. And therefore, when we open them in Video Surgeon, they're going to be bigger. And once you click the toggle button, you're going to see that the little window that opens, or I should say the window that does open, is actually going to be smaller than this Video Surgeon window. Uh, not, not larger than it, like the current video that I've just shown you, where this is larger because this is actually a video I shot with a home video camera. Whereas, uh, you know, the videos that are found on YouTube YouTube actually resizes them as it uploads them to conserve file space and that's why they're normally smaller. So again, I'm going to conclude this. I strongly suggest and urge you to look at the other videos on this page because there will be the additional detail that you are looking for and that you need to actually learn some of these functionalities uh, so you can use them easily. So um, thank you for your interest in Video Surgeon and um, we look forward to seeing you again. Bye.